Six steps to using machine learning to drive predictive SEO strategies that support business goals and outcomes. With C. Shangasi. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by Rank Ranger, the all in one SEO platform that helps skill your business through data and analytics. Hey, it's David. How do you actually incorporate machine learning into your SEO strategy? That's what we're discussing today with a man who's been a search account director for Ogilvy and SEO director for Havis Media Group. He's currently a Web3 CX advisor. A warm welcome to the InSearch SEO podcast, C. Shangasi. Hello, David. How are you doing? Hello, C. I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing? Doing well. It's good to see you again. You know, always love having these chats with you. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Always enjoy these conversations. Uh, I want to say you can find C over at kuduhq.com. Tell us about Kudu, C. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so what Kudu HQ actually is, is, is it's a way to support people or founders to basically drive new users to their projects and also to help them fundraise. So one of the biggest issues or the biggest sort of pain points that founders would have is essentially either outreaching or getting their project to market. And the best way to do that is obviously through good old SEO. And the CX in, in that is basically being a customer experience uh, advisor. So what do we do when people get to the website? We do all the fun things that SEOs love to do. Content, tech, <laughs> outreach. <laughs> So we were having a fun conversation beforehand about um, you know what what you were doing, what you were setting up, what your brand was, what Web three was about, and uh, obviously people can find out a little bit more about that there. But uh, today, you know, we're zeroing in on machine learning. So should every SEO be using machine learning? Do you think? I think so. I think so. Um, I think they should because it's probably the best way to actually make more logical, informed decisions. And a lot of the times, you know, I'm an, I'm an SEO and very guilty of this because I've got a lot of experience, but sometimes it's really the right experience, for instance. And when you're using the way that we've actually, that I'm going to highlight in a minute, like some of the six things that you can do essentially to, to use machine learning is you can bring your data back and you can analyze it at scale. And that's the most important thing, having a lot of information, a lot of scalability is going to allow you to actually see different scenarios from an output perspective. So that's a good place to be in. Great. Okay, well, we'll dive into the six steps just in a second. I just want to clarify exactly what you meant by something else. Uh, you were talking about uh, using it to drive predictive SEO strategies. So what do you mean by that? Yeah, so essentially it's, for instance, one of the in with predictive SEO, you have different input variables. So for instance, what we're going to talk about today is how do you analyze, for instance, that you could go to Search Console, looking at clicks, looking at impressions. What you can do as well with machine learning is you can have a look at content, for instance, different keywords, monthly search volume, you look at seasonality. And with the keyword research that you do and the type of content that you're going to create, you can actually start to predict how much of those clicks or those impressions are going to basically translate into clicks for your business and then eventually into sales for your business. So that's the best thing about this is that you can actually use a lot of input variables, but at the same time you can see what a content strategy is gonna do for you and what a specific change in either a technical structure is also gonna do for your website. Understood. Okay, so essentially you're using a model to demonstrate whether or not um, what you intend to do is likely to be successful or not. That's correct. And that's what you want to do. You want to see, for instance, if a specific change is going to have a positive impact or is it going to have a negative impact? And what's that going to look like? So if you're a business, you need to understand what's the business case, for instance, to make that change. And that can allow you to, to actually put a monetary value to the work that you are actually going to implement. And that's obviously a good thing for all product managers who want to know why should I make this change from an SEO perspective? What's the bottom line to the business? And 
essentially that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to as close to that as possible. You know, it's not always accurate, but the accuracy with you know, some of the machine learning applications essentially is you get to as close as to 86% confidence. Mm -hmm. So at least you know that from a confidence ratio, you can actually share that with your with your leadership team to give you some form of security in terms of how accurate that data is or how accurate your, your plans would be. Yeah. So I think that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to share a bit more visibility to other stakeholders within the organization of the importance of uh, certain SEO activity or tasks. Understood. Okay, so it's certainly a lot more accurate than gut instinct, than perhaps using your experience to think, you know, based on what I've done before, I think this is going to be successful. You're actually using data to model based upon your current circumstances, your current websites, your current competitors, you know, the content out there, what is likely to be successful in the future. So I understand well, well, that's really essential to do, uh, and yeah. uh, you're doing a great thing there. So let's let's zero into these six steps then to using machine learning. So stepping back to doing that. So number one is to get a Google Cloud account. Yeah, we've got to start, we've got to take it to the basics. <laughs> so the main thing is to get a Google Cloud account. And um, my, my recommendation would be, you know, using Google Cloud account because it's, a lot of people have used either Google Search Console, so they're well aware of using ads, the views, you know, Google Sheets. So the reason why I would say Google Cloud account is that you can obviously, it's integrated within that suite. And it's just quite easy to actually plug in some add-ons into your Google Sheets. And you can also plug into what is now Luca Data Studio. You can plug into that as well. So yeah, utilizing a Google Cloud account would be the best way to, to actually start out. And then as you, you know, increase, you can start to look at different um, other options, but that would be the first place to start. Yeah, Google Data Studio now, Looker Data, uh, Data Studio. That's a bit of a left field <laughs> brand choice, it seems like, <laughs> but I'm sure there's logic behind it. Yeah, I would have thought that Google will basically suck up everything and uh, call everything Google, right? That's what they mm. tend to do. But uh, it's very interesting that they've decided to stick with Looker. Looker is a great platform. Uh, I'm sure it is. Um, yeah, I, I, exactly. Number two, the second step, create Google Cloud Platform using Search Console API. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I was talking about in the first step. So essentially, what you've got within the Google Cloud Platform is that you can actually connect the Search Console API. How do you get this? Well, I mean, the main thing is you can just, for those of you who actually haven't done it, you can... Just Google, Google search, how to get Google Search Console API. And um, Google obviously writes very, very good blog posts around how you can actually pull that data from your Search Console account. And then you can plug that into the cloud platform console, essentially. So that would be the first step would be to get in on the platform, connecting the APIs together. So basically they all talk to each other. And step three, using BigQuery, create a schema for your data set. Yeah, yeah. A lot of SEOs have actually done schema markup. So if you haven't, please uh, give it a go. It's a lot of fun. There are tools out there that can allow you to actually create sort of schema markup for your data, for your web pages. I know it might not be something that's high priority for you, but just the way the logic and how it works, it's going to help you with this step essentially. So what the step actually does is you, what you're doing here is you're telling Google Cloud Platform a big query which data you need. So for instance, because we're going to be using a lot of search console data, uh, the main things that we're going to need are, you know, dates, impressions, clicks, CTRs. So pulling those in, understanding what they are. So for instance, when we look at impression data, it's a numeric data. When we look at CTR data, it's float data. So, and the reason why you do that, because you have a decimal point in CTRs, so just learning a little bit more about schema and how it works is, um, is going to help you go a long way in this regard because the data that you actually mark up um, in the schema that you want to pull in is going to be the stuff that, you know, basically BigQuery is going to be pulling in from Search Console and that's the data you're going to be warehousing basically for, for your analysis later down the line. As perspective from a hardcore SEO, use schema data because it's a lot of fun. That's the number one selling point. I love that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. You haven't played with it. You, I think you're going to enjoy it. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, step number four to getting started with machine learning is get access to Forecast Forge for your business. Yeah, yeah, this is um, this is a big one. So where does Forecast Forge come from? It was actually created by the guys at Google. I actually, I was listening to an all in podcast and apparently one of the guys who created this is a superstar genius PhD guy and he's cr- helped them create this machine learning sort of predictive forecasting behemoth of a tool. And the great thing is you don't have to have millions to actually have this at your doorstep. You can just use something called Forecast Forge. It only costs like a hundred quid. So it's not a lot of money and it's something that you can plug into your Google Sheets. And the reason why you do that is because now what you've done is you've got Google Search Console, you've got your cloud computer, which has BigQuery, and then you have Forecast Forge. Forecast Forge is actually an add-on that you can use within um, your Google Sheets. And that allows you to create the predictions of your data sets. So let's go back. You warehousing all your data in BigQuery and then you're analyzing it using Forecast Forge. And then using Luca to plug into your Google Sheets to basically visualize your data. You mentioned data set already there. Number five, uh, step number five is run your data set on regular day intervals. Yes, yes. I think this is an important one actually because you can probably miss this when you are looking into how to actually put this together. Um, and, and I'd say it's all about just going down a rabbit hole. So definitely got a rabbit hole of how you can break, basically create the schema of your data and then which intervals you should run it in. Definitely run it in dailies. If you are a bigger business, you might want to run it every hour, but this is going to obviously take up a lot of your compute sort of credits. So definitely run it on a regular daily interval, especially with Search Console. And that's just going to give you a bit more better accuracy, especially when you're doing the reporting that's plugged into your your Luca uh, data studio. And taking us up to step six, connect BigQuery with Luca Data Studio. Yeah, I think we sort of jumped to this one. So yeah, it's the, the great thing about Google suite of platforms is that you can sort of connect them all up together and if you're using a different platform you need a third party provider to sort of basically plug into that so within google data studio and now look at data studio you can basically connect the the insights platform with the hardcore data that you actually pull in from search console that you're analyzing essentially so that'll be the, the main last step and then once you've done that it's basically playing around with how the data actually looks in terms of uh, the insights that you're pulling in and visually as well from, from that perspective. So um, yeah, that's the last and final step, but I think it's all is about sort of playing and testing. That's the main key thing is to to test and see how the data's been collected, um, what it looks like, and then just basically circling back and forth on this around the so like process essentially superb well let's finish off with the Pareto pickle so Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts what's one SEO activity that you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort yeah I'd say mm, crawl budget optimization definitely and the reason why I say that is you know, just optimize your, your Rust text file, essentially, uh, from how Google crawls it. Think about your most important category pages or your most important pages. And you want Google to access or get to the pages that are most important to you as fast as possible. And then you could do the rest later, which is obviously making sure the content is right, looking at internal links and, and all that fun stuff. But the most important thing is just making sure when you do click that uh, request indexing button, in Search Console, then when Google comes in to actually crawl your website or your web pages, it's getting the information that it needs as fast as possible. Super. I've been your host, David Bain. You can find C over at hoodoohq.com. C, thanks so much for being on the In Search SEO podcast. Thank you, David. Always a pleasure. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Rank Ranger platform over at rankranger.com. <laughs>